Ah. Okay, um, last year we went to, um, where was it, Worksworth in the UK and I worked with a stone worker there. I thought I'd try my hand at text. This is called Kilcare Dyslexic and it celebrates the little bit of dyslexia that I have in my life. Kilcare backwards and Listexia. <coughs> Carved into the steps of my friend Mary Mitchell's house. Our image here is from Saxon times, it's from the Worksworth Church, it's a lead miner. He has his pick over his shoulder and his little bag, and he spent all time down his mine mining lead. <coughs> the theme of the project was, in the UK, alchemy. And I thought to myself, how did the British turn lead into gold? So, of course, we kept the figure, and the way I looked at it is that the British turned the lead into musket balls, and then took it out to the world and got the gold. <coughs> and he has his cat of nine tails down there, spreading the word taking the riches of, of the world. So this is one little carving from the works work. This is the alchemy stone. So the project here was the morphing of our Saxon lead miner through to the uh, <coughs> red coat. And then finally, when the Brits came to Australia, the other heavy metal that they really loved was uranium. Um, the text here is done in 45 calibre bullets in between in the bra. And of course, on the side of the stone, our um, lead miner morphed into an Australian with a bit of a larrikin intent. So he's on a surfboard with a boomerang and a gun leaf over his shoulder <laughs> heading on the original work around the corner towards the sun. So this was all taking place in the eco centre in, in Derbyshire. Um, this little work is a gift to my German friends who I stayed with in Germany. I just carved them a, a uh, relief carving of Goanna in stone for them. Uh, it was a nice way to say thank you for having me for a, off and on for a two months, looking around the continent. Have a drink. The daughter of my friend Dieter lives in uh, Berlin, and if you've ever been to Berlin, in the traffic lights there's a little picture of a man walking with a hat on. Again, that's um, sandstone carved with a hammer and a nail, and it was a gift to the people who I stayed with. I've made, this is called the Ample Man, but I put a boomerang in his hand to just celebrate the fact that we've been there. This works at Coonabarabran High School, it's called Dancing Together. It was done in consultation and collaboration with the Aboriginal students at the, uh, at the high school in Coonabarabran. And the stars were very important in this work and also the outline of the um, Warren Bungle Ranges. And it celebrated the high achievement of Aboriginal students in, in the school there. This particular works out at uh, Hobbles Creek at Baker's place, the Baker's Sculpture Park. It is the double Y shape of the, the ploughed in headlands on the paddock. We have X and Y chromosomes. And down in the corner of fetus, and it's the collection of genes. It's the harvest of genes uh, called, called Future Harvest. <coughs> this is the falling man, made from a circular piece of cast iron that was a wagon wheel rim. It was designed on a Adobe Photoshop cut on a plasma cutter in orange at Quartz Engineering. Went to Sculptures by the Sea and it's still at my place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bathurst uh, Hospital, this particular work is granite with uh, stained glass embedded in it. Uh, the grey work is for the community, the local community now. There is a white marble piece for physiology and medicine, the traditional uh, society, the Wiradjuri Society, and the visitors in a red granite over there. This particular work is on the railway line at Wadamandara. It's a new style of work that I'm doing where I'm just photographing uh, ephemeral works. This is called Online Crossing. It looks at the negligence or the neglect of the railway system. That's made from dry stone and bricks. This is called the Ghost Ladder. Uh, it's pieces of red granite in the fork of the yellow box tree. And you can imagine something climbing into that tree of that work. Again, <coughs> when the wind blows, those bits have probably fallen out now and, and you'll never see this work again except for this photograph. <laughs> this work uh, looks at, well, for a start, that was a grindstone from the abattoir in Cowra, again with red granite. That's going down to a show in, on the south coast later in the year. Uh, I sat in my, out in my little block for a long time until I worked out that if I put the, the red piece of stuff in the top, beautiful. Kurok Falls, who's been there? Magnificent place, absolutely one of my most favourite places in the world. It's just got such a, a great feeling to it. And this is 
where my latest project of ephemeral sculptures uh, is placed in the rock beds above and below Kurawafa Falls. This is carbon sink, a dead tree in the, in the creek. I'm using this technique of building uh, <coughs> stone, using the natural objects in the place, in the creek bed, so that when it floods, this whole lot will be gone. The, the stone arrangements are going to disappear. But I'm actually carving the name of the work in the stone. This is shrine number one. Again, it has the, the name will be carved into the stone here. And once this disappears, I'm going to uh, exhibit the photographs with the name and the GPS coordinates in the title of the photograph. So that will be the body of work eventually will be a series of photographs. Hmm. From Mona in Tasmania, the Museum of Old and New Art, block of clay, stone axe, I can't remember the artist's name off the top of my head, he was French. Uh, <coughs> very interesting body of work that was done in stone. And I thought, yeah, okay, Paleolithic axe, that's um, great, but you call that an axe? These are axes. <laughs> this is from Baradine, a project that's in Dandry Gorge. Uh, that was built in cahoots with the community. We worked together with the whole uh, Gamilaroi community creating both of these objects to celebrate the interaction of cultures in the Pillager Scrub. And finally, this relates to the, the project I want to see in the future. From a story when I was a kid about people that collected Aboriginal artefacts in this valley, that they found a site with 100 axes somewhere on Wagula Creek. And that site has never been made public. We still don't know where it is. I'd like to create a body of work including 100 axe objects and maybe even find the place and rebirth the story. Thank you.